The Nick Kyrgios and Borna Torres drama continues as both players took to Twitter to throw jabs at one another. For those who aren't aware, this conflict arose because Torres spoke on Kyrgios calling out everybody for acting irrationally during this pandemic. The Korat said, I agree it is not good. Zverev did a bad thing, but I don't see a need to criticize fellow players in such a way. I wouldn't do it, but again it's Kyrgios. I read what he wrote, but I simply don't care, since he likes to be a general after a battle. If someone else was teaching lessons, I would have maybe understood. But Kyrgios, it's somehow not realistic. But okay, it's his style. That's how he functions. I have no problem with that, neither does it bother me on a personal level. Nick in response tweeted, You should care. Do you have rocks in your head? Again, you can stand up for your mates. I'm just trying to hold them accountable. When I said what I said, I didn't intend to bother. They are tennis players, they aren't special. Just as I thought, Torch's intellectual level, zero. Borna, just making sure that you spuzz didn't cause more players to feel like Dimitrov. Have you read how he continued to feel after he tested negative, or that's too much for that brain of yours to process? Surprisingly, yesterday Torch responded to Nick's tweet, punching back with a bit of a dig himself. Really, Nick? You're preaching about behavior, bored much, or too much alcohol? I have to be honest, I didn't expect Borna to respond, let alone comfort Nick like he did. Of course, Nick had to clap back and replied, again, joking about a global pandemic. Shows your maturity level, champion. Gonna be good to see you next, see if that peanut of a brain has grown. But yes, a tad bored watching your boring tail tennis and personality bringing absolutely zero to the sport. Nick has been receiving a lot of praise and support during this entire squabble as people agree that George is not taking this current situation seriously enough. I agree with that and with Nick's stance, but I don't like the way he's communicated it. I said in my last video that harshly calling out these players does no good and instead makes them less inclined to take his words to heart. I understand that Kyrgios has zero filter and has a no-nonsense way of thinking, but if he truly wants these players to change their ways, he needs to slightly adjust his tone. This will probably not happen, but somehow, some way, I hope that he can accomplish his goal. Now, another top Aussie player everybody has been supporting is Ash Barty, after the world number one announced that she would not be competing in this year's US Open. My team and I have decided that we won't be traveling to the US and Western and Southern Open and the US Open this year, Barty said in a statement. I love both events, so it was a difficult decision, but there is still significant risk involved due to COVID-19, and I don't feel comfortable putting my team and I in that position. I wish the USTA all the best for the tournaments, and I look forward to being back in the United States next year. I will make my decision on the French Open and the surrounding WT European tournaments in the coming weeks. Many praise the 24-year-old for taking precautions for her health, and people feel that the US Open should not go on due to the United States' poor handling of the pandemic. I agree and commend Barty for doing what she feels is right. I know a lot of people were saying that Barty isn't that big of a name, so the tournament won't be missing much, but she still is the number one women's player. It's never good that the top women's player misses a slam, especially if she's 100% healthy. This US Open is just a big question mark to me, and even Andy Murray expects many more players to follow in Barty's footsteps. I think we will see it quite a bit. I have heard some of the top male players aren't going to play. I would expect that would be the case, said Murray. It's everyone's personal decision. If they don't feel safe and don't feel comfortable traveling and going there and putting themselves and their team at an increased risk, then it's completely understandable. While on the topic of tournaments in doubt, the Palermo Ladies Open, which will officially resume the tour next week, has seen some extreme setbacks. In addition to the top two seats, Halep and Kanta withdrawing, Muhova, Kuznetsova, Ostapenko, and Suitek have also followed suit. Nonetheless, people are still excited for the return of tennis, as Daria Kazakina expressed her joy of finally having a tournament credential once again. Moving on to Stefano Tsitsipas, the Greek player finds himself in a bit of controversy as he was once again caught plagiarizing work from authors. I say again because back in early June, he was called out for not crediting work from Matt Haig. 
CeCePos later tweeted an apology to Haig, which the author accepted, and everything seemed to be fine. That was until he plagiarized another author. This time, Paul Ngong was the victim, as the world number 6 took content from his book, The 101 Secrets for Your 20s. Ngong said, Hey Stephanos, I'm glad you loved my book. I would have appreciated you quoting me when tweeting out 10 untold secrets from it. Love, an author who strives to bring hope while supporting a family of six. Rather than apologize, Stephanos merely tweeted, Paul, your book was great. Thank you for being such an inspiration. I don't think Stephanos should be receiving a lot of hate for this. Rather, he needs to understand that not crediting these authors is wrong and dead this habit. While it does give the writer exposure, it's embarrassing that he's constantly being called out for not giving a simple tag. This entire thing is just very strange. Anyways, on a lighter note, Stephanos recently did a Behind the Racket article where he reveals his struggles of being on the tour. In 2018, I broke into the top 15 and was seated in Grand Slams. That's when I understood my potential. In the beginning, I traveled with only my dad. Now, I travel with my dad, mom, and three siblings. I'm the main source of income for my family. I have different hobbies that keep me interested in different aspects of life. These activities keep me creative and are reflected in my tennis game and presence on court. Sometimes, I post things on my social media that not many people understand. These posts express my inner creativity. I'm just trying to be different from the rest. I put Stephanos' twist on life. I am philosophical. I come from a country with a history of philosophy, and I don't know if I was Pythagoras or Socrates in my previous life, but I wouldn't mind being either one. There was a time when I wasn't doing well. I started to play futures and was doubting myself. I wasn't sure if I was good enough to play professional tennis. My country was going through hard times. Greece was on the verge of bankruptcy. The entire population was suffering. My father's siblings were unemployed and couldn't feed their families. People looked at me like I was the one ruling the country and they thought I was part of the problem. I felt isolated. I wasn't home to see what was going on because I was traveling. I needed support. My mentor coach shared his wisdom and inspired me. Then I said to myself, you dedicated your entire life to tennis. You can't just give up. You've got to keep going. I played tennis to prove that my country has a great history and can achieve success. Tennis is a very introverted sport, and we face everything alone. We have a team that follows us all over the world, but I have spent countless sleepless nights on my own. All the traveling and competing causes a lot of stress, and I grew very lonely. I was an introverted child, and I didn't have many friends. When I first started playing on tour, I thought I would develop friendships, but it turned out to be the opposite. Most players keep to themselves. I feel like players don't want to become friends because they think someone will grab a secret from you to beat you. I guess they're just too serious about the whole thing. Friends will make traveling less lonely. As an introverted person myself, I understand where Stephanos is coming from and find it interesting that he says that most players keep to themselves. I feel like it's the opposite and that Stephanos was kind of an outsider, but maybe there's more to the story. The last topic I'm going to be covering in this video is backlash Nomi Osaka has been receiving. Originally, Osaka raised a lot of questions because she wasn't signed up for the Western and Southern Open. Because of this, people believed that she and Bianca Andreescu would opt out of playing the US Open. This is not the case, at least for Osaka, as she took a wild card into the Western and Southern Open. This actually rubbed people the wrong way and they felt that her quote laziness could have given a deserving player a wild card spot. I was shocked at the amount of tweets calling her entitled or arrogant, especially since people don't know the reason behind her late entry. Sloan Stevens did the exact same thing, and there weren't as many people on her neck, which is very interesting. Nonetheless, the star studded wildcard list consists of Kim Clijsters, Katie McNally, Naomi Osaka, Sloan Stevens, and Venus Williams. That's all for this video, and let me know what you think about this Curios Chorch beef. Do you believe that Nick is doing too much? Also, do you feel like the Naomi criticism is warranted? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below and subscribe and click the notification bell so you're notified whenever we post new content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time here on Grand Slam Tennis News Today.